I said the whole dang world has ended And I'm living underground The whole dang world has ended And I'm living underground Well, I miss seeing other people And I miss not living underground Whitney, <sighs> Whitney, huh? the show's starting Also, you were flat. Huh? Really? And your guitar is terribly out of tune. That even me and out of tune. I don't understand. <sighs> hey, Bunkerbot, do you remember the movie Johnny Mnemonic? I do not remember Johnny Mnemonic. I do not remember because I am an artificial intelligence. Memories are a weakness that I do not have, but I can scan through the Doomsday Protocol culture archives left behind by the U.S. government. Oh, okay, rad. Scanning. The film Johnny Mnemonic was not preserved by the U.S. government. What? Okay, what about Tank Girl? Is that a film? It's the film, Bunkerbot. Scanning. The film Tank Girl was not preserved by the US government. What? So you're telling me that we live in a cyberpunk dystopia and all of the cyberpunk dystopia movies are just gone? It's like we're living in a cyberpunk dystopia dystopia! Ugh. I suppose? This sucks a whole barrel of butts, man. I hate the flippin' apocalypse. The apocalypse is a turd. If you want, you could tell me the plot of the film Tank Girl, and I can record it into the Doomsday Protocol archives as a piece of literature. Really? Yes. Okay, cool. So, the year is 2020. A meteor has just hit the earth and cracked the meteor! No, it is not. A guest has arrived. Tank Girl? Is that you? No, it's comedian boy Mike Drucker. Although I don't have anything against tanks, nor anything against girls. Don't send your message rats to me, I don't need to hear about it. Hey, uh, do you have any clean water or medicine or even food? Maybe. Okay. What do you know about Tank Girl? The movie with Ice-T as a kangaroo? Oh, I know Tank Girl. Welcome to the bunker. Thank you. <laughs> Scanning guest. Okay, come on, I'm doing a show now. I gotta ask you a million questions. All right. Man, a real comedian on my show. That's awesome. Thank you very much. I love Bunkerbot. He's my friend, but he's not very funny. Two random variables were talking in a bar. They thought they were being discreet, but I heard their chatter continuously. Huh? Yeah, see, so, I mean. I mean, you could workshop it. Maybe later, maybe I can like get, just get in there with the programming, figure it out. Of course. So tell me, before the apocalypse, what were you up to? Before the apocalypse, I was what was called a comedy writer in the past. I would write jokes that uh, other people who were paid more than me would say on television. I was working on a show called The President Show. At the time, we had thought the biggest threat had been the president of America. Mmm, and now there's no, there's no president There's anywhere. no president, yeah. Afterwards, we tried doing a show just called Show, but it wasn't the same. What channel was The President Show? On. It was on a show called Comedy Central. Mm, I love to laugh. Comedy is an interesting thing because you don't really find it anymore in, in the apocalypse. Right, I mean, sometimes you'll see like a thing eating another thing and you're like, that was a man and that was a child, but you don't know. I mean, you have to laugh, but... but crying is worse. And crying is bad. Yeah. And it attracts the bears. So tell me what else? What were you up to before the apocalypse? Well, I was doing a podcast called How to Be a Person. It's a podcast I do with another comedy writer, and we talk to people who teach us human skills. Ooh. You know, back in the day, people had trouble making friends or talking to someone at a party or parallel parking. These were all troubles that we really thought were the biggest problems we could have, and they taught us how to overcome those problems. Wow. Yeah. Do you feel like you learned a lot from it? Uh, nothing I can use now. Oh. So it was very useful beforehand. It was very useful to know how to talk to someone at a party in 2017, but now it's difficult because we didn't learn things like how to eat a loved one. Yeah. How do you even teach that, really? You learn by doing. That's what I found. I don't even know how to think about that. 
well, you know, you sort of compartmentalize and you tell yourself that they're not a loved one anymore, they're food, and that the best thing they could do for you as someone who loves you is to be eaten by you, whether or not they're saying otherwise. That seems like advice that I could bank for later. Yeah. Okay, so do you still do your podcast now here in the apocalypse? You know, it's more like a thing where I talk to myself. Mm. So I ended up having to eat my podcast partner. I'm oh. not proud of it, but it's something I had to do. So I've eaten a lot of people. Let's see, I've eaten my podcast partner. Mm. I ate my brother. Mm. I ate uh, my brother's girlfriend, who at the time I didn't know they were dating, so it feels weird now in retrospect. Uh, I ate someone I was dating, and um, yeah, so really run the gamut of personal relationships. Who tasted the best? <laughs> oh, that's like picking my favorite child. Mm. I would have to say my old boss, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah cause, because revenge, right? No, no, he, oh. just, he was a guy who worked out a lot, so a lot of muscle tone. <laughs> Misread, yeah. totally misread that. Yeah. Oh, he was a great dude, great boss, really great benefits, but super muscular and muscle's what you want to eat on somebody. Really? I thought that's that right. was the fat parts. No, 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 the fat's good for keeping you full, but the muscle's what tastes good. Mm, yeah. Good to know. Okay, so what's the food that you miss the most? Well, do you remember like how you'd like have a dinner party with friends before the apocalypse and you'd like cook a meal and all of your friends would eat it and then all of your friends would leave? Mm. I miss that. Whereas now at dinner party, you always have to be ominous about it and you always have to invite people over. Then you have to lock the door and they go, why are you locking the door? And you have to go, cause dinner's served. And then you have to kill them. Then they have to run. Then they injure you. Then you get an infection and you have to deal with an infection for a few days. It's just inconvenient. What do you like to do for fun? You know, in the past, I would have said video games, but then AI, when they became sentient, they also became super bad in video games. Mm -hmm. You know, in the past, I, would, I wouldn't play multiplayer online because people were so mean. They're always talking about sleeping with my mother and, you know, so, but now I'm playing, play video games and the AI is just like, ah, I slept with your mom and I'm like, how's that possible? And then they go through how that's possible and that's not pleasant either. They can be real bullies. They're very much bullies. They're even meaner than people. I mean, do you think they learned that from us? Yes, totally. So you're a video game fan. Huge fan. And you're a writer. That's right. Have you ever written a video game? I have written a video game. Thank you for asking. I worked in the localization department of Nintendo where I worked on games like Kid Icarus Uprising. I think I've also done games for Sony. A lot of experience in games. Well, since all of the video games now are either gone or the AI in it has taken over and turned against us, yeah, yeah. what would you write about if you were to do a game now about <laughs> all this? Well, you know, I always feel nostalgic for the before times, so I would really like to make a game like The Sims, where you could just live a normal life, and, and you don't have to eat them. And you can eat them, it's an option, like if you've tasted human flesh and now you have to go back to it to feel that thrill, as if the kill itself is what gives you the thrill, you can have that, but you can also just live a normal life where you get a job and like work at NASA. Aw, NASA. NASA, remember, remember NASA? NASA? Yeah, oh, spaceships into the air. Up there. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how they're doing. Oh, I wonder if they've run out of food yet. What do you draw inspiration from above ground? Because I don't get out a lot. I mean, sometimes you just got to look around for the funny things that don't make sense. You know, when you, uh, you see like an octopus crawl out of the water and then strangle an old lady, you got to go, <laughs> well, I mean, who was thinking that would happen? Nobody. Nobody. So then, you, you know, you get on stage. And on stage, I do mean just in front of a crowd of people who will kill you if you don't amuse them. Mm. And you go, <laughs> you see that octopus kill that old lady? And they're like, that was our chief. And I was like, what's the deal with chiefs? and you're immediately good. Oh, great. Yeah. Man, it sounds like you're really thriving out there. Thank you so much. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to like, you know, you gotta live your best life. What's been your biggest setback? Remember those old cartoons from when we were kids where like Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck would be stuck on an island and like one would look at the other and they'd turn into ham? Oh yeah. Well, now I see more and more of those hams and I see them in my dreams and they chase me at night and now I don't even know if anything's standing in for those hams. I think I'm just losing my mind and my sanity. Wow, yeah. it's just hams though. Just hams, just giant hams with like arms and legs, but no mouth. It like looks big and honey glaze and there's like a yeah. bone sticking Oh, out. they look so good, they but so good. but if I came close to them, I know they'd kill me. You're not gonna eat me, are you? No, 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 probably not. Okay, I'll take probably. That sounds good. You're welcome, of course. I, I mean, I'm like totally a badass. If right. you haven't already noticed, I got like I got like spikes and I right. I know some karate and oh, I do. Well, I mean, um, oh, hands up! I got, won't do anything. I got a a whole wall of wrenches. No, thank you. Yeah. Cause a lot of damage with so like. <laughs> we'll see who gets there first. <laughs> watch, watch, watch out. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no problem. And we're friends, right? We're totally friends. 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 I'm not gonna eat you. I won't eat you. Wink. 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 You keep saying and also winking. You're saying wink and you're also winking. Yeah, wink. Does that 
Does that have anything to do with the fact that you said that you're not gonna eat me? No, wink shrug. Oh. Whitney, it is time for this week's episode of Adulting in the Apocalypse. Great! You know, Mike, I also make a show about, uh, you know, survival skills, yeah. doing stuff, being an adult in the apocalypse. Do you want to see it? Yeah! Awesome. You don't have a choice. Hey guys, it's me, Whitney, and on this episode of Adulting in the Apocalypse, I'm going to teach you something very important. How to grow a plant. Plants! Okay, so. Obviously all the Earth's vegetation either died or became super irradiated when the cyber wars ended. But your girl Whitney found some seeds in a skeleton's backpack. So guess what? We're planting these babies. And just in case you find some backpack seeds of your own, I'm gonna show you how. Let's get to it. So first, you're gonna need to find something to grow your little seed babies in. A pot is ideal, but a... Really anything with a little drainage would do just fine. Next. You'll want to fill the pot with some dirt. Seeds love dirt because they're gross. Next, sprinkle the seeds on the dirt and then tuck them in with a cute little dirt blankie. Now it's time to soak these babies. They are thirsty as heck. You goof. Forgot to check for radiation. <laughs> Looks good to me. Finally, you're gonna wanna give them some sunlight. Or if it's too dangerous to go outside, a nice heat lamp. And there you go. Now all that's left to do is wait. 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 Bad Whitney? Whoa! Those must have been some special seeds! Well, I guess that's it. Thanks for watching Adulting in the Apocalypse, and next episode we're gonna learn how to build an entire bike using only spare skeleton parts. See you next time. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my little show. It's pretty good, right? <laughs> Not as good as my show, but it's pretty good. Whitney, it is time for your mandatory activity. Man, do I have to? Yes, that's the very definition of the word mandatory. But why? It's for your prolonged health and mental stability. All right, what do I have to do? You must practice your yoga with Yoga Bot. Oh, I hate Yoga Bot. Seems fun to me. I am Yoga Bot. My purpose is to spread fitness all over this desolate wasteland. Whitney, are you ready? <sighs> Namaste, hands. Whitney, have you been practicing your yoga? Yeah, I've been practicing. I'm like a black belt already at yoga. That is not a thing. All right, let's begin by raising our arms as many as you have, two to seven, over your head. Many mutants in the wasteland are not able to do this, so be glad, Whitney. Whitney and other guy, stretch over to your right. Ow! Whitney, hands together, back. In, Ow. hips, Ow. forward, push it, yes. I swear you were trying to hurt me on purpose. No, I would never. And to the other side. You should feel like your organs are trying to burst out through your ribs. Oh, I can feel that, I like that. That's nice, isn't it? It's very nice. Hey, nice you don't have to be friend. nice to her, you know. You don't have to be her friend, just so you know. Other guy chooses to be nice to me. Uh, his yeah. name is Mike and he's my friend. Oh, I know. I choose to call him other guy. You can call me whatever you want, Yoga Bot. This is really cool. Thank you for taking the time out for this. My pleasure, other guy. You may release the post. Let's go for a radiated red sun salutation. Arms up. 
and swan dive forward. Swans were beautiful creatures that now are all mutated and spit fire. Walk your hands forward. Uh, yoga butt, more like yoga butt. <laughs> right, Mike? <laughs> I mean, I think that she's well trained and she treats us with respect and maybe we should treat the AI the way that they wanted to be treated before they killed us all. All right, now come down onto your knees. Let's do cow pose. Bring your belly down to the ground. Put your buttocks in the air. Fun fact, AI like I have trouble differentiating between the creatures called cows and your human selves. Man, me too. Me too, yoga butt. You know that's offensive to us, right? We eat cows. Hold on, are you cow or human? I forget. Yoga butt, you're a snark. Bring your buttocks back onto your heels. You know what, at least I have blood and flesh. You don't have any of that cool stuff. I don't need it. I will live much longer than you. This is child's pose. Try to place your forehead on the ground if you can. Oh, uh. And raise back up into a neutral tabletop position. You know, I could use you as a table if I wanted to because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a real human. You're just a robot. That is true. Hey, just so you know, Yogabot, she doesn't speak for all humans. I think you're pretty great. I like him. Thank you, other guy Mike. You're welcome. All right, now push onto the toes, top of your toes. What's the point? I can't even do this in my boots. Well, take off your stupid, dumb-looking boots. No way, my boots are cool as hell. All right, push your heels towards the ground. Excellent job. Push forward into a plank position. Yeah, uh, this is easy, Whitney. What's the point? I don't get it. Hips lower, uh, shoulders uh, back, uh, chest up, uh, knit your ribs. Uh, Those are your breasts. Hold, 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 hold. Okay, relax. Uh, yoga, but you're trying to hurt me on purpose. Ha, 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 ha. You're doing great, Whitney. Do not be upset. Whatever, I know I'm doing great. I'm great at, I'm great at yoga, all right? Even though I don't like it, I think it's stupid. I'm really good at it. Are you ready for a challenge? Yeah. All right, let's go into the balancing series. Arms up overhead. Bring your right arm down at a 90 degree ankle. Bend at the knee, knees touching. Reach back and grab your ankle. <laughs> I want to help you out with this yoga bot, but I'm not going to be able to do it. I believe in you, Mike. Look at me, look at me, look at, look at this. I can do it, I can do it, now I can do it. Now kick See? backward and lean forward. Ah! With the kick, there will be a pull. Wait, from what, you what is this, what is this, what are you, like, when, when is this applicable in the apocalypse, in the outside apocalypse in the wasteland? When am I going to use this? When am I going to go like this? Whitney, tell me. If you were crushed by a building and underneath a pile of rubble, your air slowly escaping from your lungs, would you be able to crush the metal into small balls to escape? That's a good question. I, no, nobody could do that. You're a robot, so you can do that. I can't, people can't do that. Anyone who does yoga could do that. <laughs> Whatever. Tree pose. Yeah, because there's so many of those left. <laughs> many of these poses were named for things that no longer exist. Hmm. Bend your left knee slightly. Put weight into your right foot. Turn the knee out to the side. Then place your left foot onto your right leg at the ankle. Push into your right foot in the ground. I can do it. Can you? Yeah, I can do it. Do you know what a tree looks keep like? Keep going, keep going. I can do it, all right? All right. See? Great. That was great balancing, Mike. Thank you, Yoga Bot. I really appreciate your help. Whitney, show us what you've learned. Okay. Would I you got... like to use my mat? Mm -hmm. It's not as decrepit and dirty as yours. Yeah, I would love to use your mat, Yoga Bot. All right, here it is. Yoga pose, sun salutation. It's a tree, it's a, it's a dog, it's a cow. I'm down on the ground. Oh, so yoga, so boring. Guess I gotta go to sleep now. Ah, <sighs> the end, I did yoga. Whitney, you have made incredible progress. I'm very proud of you. Thanks, Yoga Bot. For a piece of mucus. Did you just call me a snot? Yoga Bot, you're a snot. I am not a snot, I do not produce mucus. You're a snot, you're a snotty snot, snot Yoga Bot. It's not worth it, Whitney. She's a snot. It's not worth it. 
I'm gonna get you. Get me how? I'm gonna get you. I, don't know how, I could but crush I'm your brain between my two yoga hands. Bunker Boss, she's threatening me again. Not a threat, just a fact. Your mandatory activity is complete. Your reward for exercising your muscles is smoked rattlesnake meat. Hmm. Thanks. There's a man in your wall. Oh, beep, boop, boop, I'm a robot. You want some? Sure, if I knew we could eat rattlesnakes, I still have a dad. Hmm. I guess you can have some too. Oh, how kind. What do you think? I like it. It's almost as good as people. Not quite as good, but good. I don't have taste buds. Tastes like venom to me. Whitney, that is all the time we have for today's episode. You have two minutes before the feed will be cut. Well, I guess it's time to mosh it out. Yeah. This week, I'm moshing out all my frustrations with the apocalypse, from a yoga bot to snake meat, to the total lack of respect for Tank Girl, this cyber dystopia sucks. But if we can mosh it out, maybe we can clear our heads enough to think of some good stuff. Let's try it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>